Hey hey, it's Tom from Audio Ideal, and today I'm going to be very quickly showing you how I have menus like this in Reactor. So it's actually very simple to do this. What we need is in our instrument, we need a stacked macro with each envelope separately in a different macro. So macro one, macro two, macro three, macro four. In stacked macros, what happens is when you send a number to the panel index, it shows that number of macro. So for example, if we send a one, we'll have macro one, macro two, macro three, and macro four. Now these could be different controls in each one, but in this case, it's just the same It's envelopes in each of these. What you could do is you could actually have eight options and have envelopes and LFOs. So if you clicked on one, it would show this set of controls. And if you clicked on another, maybe it would show this set of controls. But I have it set out a bit separate like this. Now then, to create something like this, what you need to do is design an image for the background. What I have here is an Adobe Illustrator file. And for this, I set something 320 pixels wide. And let's say, I think it was 100 pixels tall. Tall isn't as essential as wide. Wide matters a lot because you need to do some maths. And then what you do, you create four images, one with this selected. We can turn that off. One with, let's say, this one selected, envelope two. We could create a fill, maybe we could make it transparent. And we just render four images with that selected, that selected, that selected, and that selected. So the middle bit looks the exact same then you think you're just selecting the tab, but actually I'm repeating this image completely. So you could even have a different background texture on each of these. Let's say you wanted to mimic different compressors, you could have different layouts or different picture designs like that. I've kept it so it stays the same and it's only these little squares that change. Now then to do this, we have our normal macros which get selected like this. In this case, I have them all sending out at once. Sometimes you might only want to enable the one you've selected and then you just do a selector or a scanner and route that. But the main thing here is our mouse over area. If we go into properties and we view this, we can actually show this if we set the transparency to 5%, 5%, you can actually see this box here. I'm going to bring it up to 50. There's a box over these controls and that tracks firstly when you click and secondly where you click. And this is why it's really important to have the number of pixels across set out because this is 320 pixels across as I had designed in here. This is a slightly different one, but I use 320 quite a lot for especially for menu items and this means when I select round about here, it's 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, 240, 280, 320, for example. And that's tracked here with the pixel X. So as we go along, it's tracking the X position. And then BL, the only other input out of all these that we actually need to track is tracking when it's clicked. Now I've created a macro here that takes those two in. What we have to do is divide by 80 because each of these sections is 80 pixels wide. So let's say we're here just before the envelope two section. So what would this be? This would be like 79, 75. Divide that by 80 and that might be 0 0.9. And what we need to do is convert for numbers between zero and one for this one, one and two for here, two and three for here, three and four for here, because that's going to select the output of the selector, which is going to give the panel index of let's say one, two, three, four. So yeah, if we go back into the macro here, we see we have it divided by 80. Now this is a really, really important one because what happens with this is when you click, it sends the click sync signal as one when you hold the mouse down and it releases it when you let go. And what we need to do is read the X position and then trigger that X position as we click. And that sends the output there. The other important thing about this value is it doesn't just stop once you've clicked it, it continues sending it. 
if we didn't have this, what would happen? You'd click it, it would very briefly select envelope three, for example, and then as soon as you let go of the mouse, it would default back to, let's say, envelope one or zero or some random buggy number, and you wouldn't get the right one. So this value is really important here because it allows you to select and basically hold that signal of what you're showing. The next one, I've created a core value here. And the reason I have this minus 0 0.5 is just simply for the way the numbers work and the rounding. What we need to do is take away 0 0.5 so it rounds correctly. This very much depends on how you have it set up and stuff, but I found when I selected in the first half of envelope one, it correctly selected it. But in the second half, it actually rounded up to envelope two, and we didn't want that. So I just had everything taken down so everything rounds a bit better. And then all we need to do is have these constants coming up. And that means when we go into the selector, as it sends the value, let's say here, of 0 0.5, that selects the first constant, which in this case is zero. And that will send zero out when I select here. Anywhere in this box, it will send the constant of one. Anywhere in this box, the constant of two. And anywhere in this box, it will send the constant of three. And that goes out straight into the panel index. So when we're sending, when we're clicking on here, it sends zero out into the panel index. And because it's a zero index, um, it goes for the first one. As we click here, it sends one, which in zero based numbering is the first, isn't the first one, it's the second one. Then this selects a value two. So zero, one, two, we're envelope three. And then envelope four will send a three into the panel index, which will select envelope four. Bit confusing, a lot of this, but it's actually not that bad. The main things to consider are your mouse area has to be an easy, number and the picture behind has to be a nice number to divide by. I went by multiples of 80, could be 40, could be 100, you could have one 400 pixels wide, then you just have the divide divided by 100. I have a core macro here, I didn't really need one, I could just do a divide math module, but just to keep everything nice and tidy. And the other big thing to remember is the value, so you not just send it briefly as you click, but you continue to send it after you've released the click. And that's really it. The other thing to do when you're making this is just add little comments into your primary layout. And that's, for example, 320 pixels wide. That's just so I remember it, divided by four segments of 80 pixels each. And that way I know to do 80, or I know to change the 80 constant in the core cell below if I use a different size mass area. So that's really it. A lot of people do think that when you click in this, somehow you've programmed Reactor to change the color of each tab. That's not the case. All you have is the original designs and it's four different images with different colored tabs and you just swap in between the images. There we go. I hope that was easy to follow. I did race through it a little bit, but that's because I'm assuming everyone who watches this kind of thing has already a good grasp of Reactor. And if not, I have made some other videos in the past which show you more of the basics. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like this and definitely give it a thumbs up as well. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down and drop a comment on how we can do better because that will help everyone out in the future as well. Thank you very much.